Добрий вечір, шановні друзі. 19-й міжнародний фестиваль давньої музики у Львові поступово добігає своєї кульмінаційної точки. Сьогодні на нас з вами чекають два дійсно унікальні концерти. Приїзд учасників, яких до України, став можливим завдяки підтримці партнерів фестивалю Гетто-інституту в Україні та Центру старовинної музики Кельну «Цамос». Заключений день фестивалю буде цілком присвячений середньовічній музиці. Останнім фінальним акордом фестивалю стануть зразки давньоєвропейського епосу. Ну а просто зараз ми з вами рушимо слідами легендарного гамельського Щуролова. Як оповідає давня легенда, багато століть тому у німецькому місті Гамельн сталося лихо. Вулиці та площі, будинки, палаци та підвали наповнили тисячі щурів. Жодні засоби не допомагали позбутися щурячої навали. І магістрат у відчаї оголосив про нагороду будь-кому, хто допоможе позбавити місто від пацюків. Тоді ж у Гамельні невідомо звідки з'явився загадковий чоловік із флейтою, якого через різнобарвний одяг прозвали строкатий дудар. Він дістав із кишені чарівну флейту, під звуки якої всі міські пацюки збіглись до нього. Він вивів зачарованих тварин геть із міста та втопив їх у ріці. Місто було врятоване, але магістрат відмовився виконувати свою обіцянку та не заплатив музиканту ані монети. Тоді строкатий дудар знову заграв на своїй флейті, але цього разу на її звуки збіглися всі діти міста, які, як зачаровані, пішли за дударем та назавжди зникли із міста. Сучасні історики – Досі сперечаються, чи є історичні підстави у цієї легенди, але як би там не було, вона вже назавжди оселилася у казках братів Грім, у поемах Гейне та Гете, а ще привернула увагу всесвітньо відомого фахівця із середньовічної флейтової музики Норберта Роденкірхена. Музикант розпочав пошук музичних джерел, які були б пов'язані із часом та місцем, до яких належить ця легенда. Та врешті-решт йому вдалося відшукати у старовинних архівах мелодії, які грали середньовічні мандрівні музиканти XIII століття, так звані мінезінгери. Мелодії принца Віцлава III та його вчителя на прізвисько «Ненавчений» а ще старовинні слов'янські танці із північної Польщі. Сьогодні всі ці мелодії, які Норберт Роденкірхен виконуватиме на реконструйованих середньовічних поперечних флейтах XIII століття, переплатуться із різними варіантами історії про Щуролова і старовинних хронік у виконанні українського поета – перекладача та літературознавця Остапа Сливинського. І для того, щоб ніщо не порушило магію єднання музики та слова, ми дуже просимо вас, по-перше, вимкнути мобільні телефони, а по-друге, не аплодувати під час перформансу, а лише після його закінчення. Отже, а ми рушаємо слідами Гамельського Щуролова.
the longing tune of the Angelard, a song of young Duke Witzlaw, sung to the longing melody of his master called the Angelard, or the Unskilled, who was a contemporary of the flute player in Hamelin. The Angelarte has composed a longing tune from which I suffer while I sing his melody and produce a sound. This suffering is so severe that I praise him with my song because I never had to hear the tune during my youth. Now I follow him who brought me into misery. Full of pain, I can scarcely tell men from women. The tune leads to a longing sound and seems to be of great worth. What I wanted to say is this, the dowsing rod of my art has just moved. All you children, I tell you, these are the sweet sounds of the longing lament.
after the lament, I need to sing and bring myself news of joy by my own will. I would like to live without burdens so I can be happy and bold, so that I could overcome all longing tunes by praising them, and I would finally get old and gray in a joyful age, free of all pain.
from the 14th century antiphonary. Sexes dwindled on the day of St. John and St. Paul, on which 130 dear boys from Hamelin were faithfully spirited away. It is said that Calvaria devoured them alive. In the year 12. 84. On the day of St. John and St. Paul, the citizens of Hamelin lost 130 boys who entered Mount Calvary.
From the Chronicles of Lüneburg, the 15th century. A highly extraordinary miracle must be reported, which took place in the small town of Hamelin, in the Diocese of Minden, in the year of our Lord 1284, on the very day of St. John and St. Paul. A young man of 30 years, handsome and exceedingly well-dressed, causing all who espied him to admire his garments, crossed the bridge and entered the town through the weather gate. He carried a strange type of transverse flute ornamented with silver and began to walk through the town playing this flute. And all the young boys who heard this flute, numbering around 130, followed him through the east gate, out past the Calvary Square or the place of execution. They continued their progress and disappeared. And nobody was able to learn where a single one of them had gone. The mothers of the boys ran from one town to the next, but found no traces of their son. And as the years are calculated according to our Lord, in Hamelin they counted the passing of time according to the first, second, and third year following the exodus and disappearance of the children. This I found in an ancient book. And the mother of Dean Johann von Lüde had witnessed the disappearance of the boys from the town.
the rat catcher of Korneuburg. It is hard to explain how during the 16th century, more than 300 years after the real event, the story of the flute player of Hamelin mingled with a totally different legend, that of a rat catcher who plies his trade with a pipe. This new legend is most likely based on historical facts from the time of the plot, and it takes place in Korneuburg on the Danube in Austria. Transported through the rich repertoire of folk tales, which always emerge first in oral tradition and are embellished from generation to generation, two aspects of the story became linked. The piper, being both a rat catcher and a child conjurer, so that the new dual role of the flute player also became known and popular in Hamelin. A very important watercolor of the 16th century documented for the first time the now complete figure as it emerged later in the world famous fairy tale by the brothers Grimm. Here is the folk tale about the rat catcher of Korneuburg. Once famous for its grain markets, the city of Korneuburg was heavily infested with rats and mice. Nothing the city council did against the scourge helped. Then a man appeared in the city, claiming that through his art he could capture animals, including all the city's rats, and expel them by driving them into the waters of the nearby Danube River. The citizens promised him a nice reward. So, with his flute, the man went whistling throughout the city, and in no time he drove all the rats and mice onto the shores of the Danube. When he demanded his wages, a dispute arose over the amount, and the city council refused to play. Very well then, said the rat catcher who went back to the shore and, playing his flute, led all the rats back to the town. Thereupon, the city council deemed it wise to give the rat catcher the required wage. Again, he took his flute and lured the rats back to and into the waters of the Danube, where they all drowned. To commemorate the liberation from these rats, a rat monument was erected. Many years later, the people decided that they no longer wanted a commemorative rat statue in their own town, their own town square, so they called it the Grat Gravestone and made a new and elaborate statue of the rat catcher of Korneuburg, placing it next to the city hall.
Brothers Grimm, German Folk Tales, the 19th century. therefore called the Pied Piper. He claimed to be a rat catcher and promised that he would rid the city of all mice and rats for a certain sum of money. The citizens struck a deal promising him a specific price. The rat catcher then took a small pipe from his pocket and began to play. Rats and mice immediately came from every house and gathered around him. When he thought that he had collected them all, he led them to the river Veza, where he waded in holding his clothes above the water. The animals all followed him, fell into the river and drowned. Now that the citizens had been freed of their plot, they regretted having promised the piper such a large sum of money, and under a multitude of pretexts, they refused to pay him. Finally, he went away, embittered and angry. He returned on June 26, St. John and St. Paul's Day. Early in the morning at seven o'clock, others say it was at noon, now dressed like a hunter, with a sinister expression on his face, and wearing a strange red hat. He sounded his fife in the streets, and this time it wasn't rats and mice that came to him, but children, a great number of boys and girls aged four years and up, among them the mayor's grown-up daughter. The crowd of children followed the piper who led them into a mountain where they all disappeared. All this was seen by a babysitter with a child in her arms who had followed them from a distance and then turned round to bring the news back to the town. The anxious parents ran in droves to the town gates, seeking their children. The mothers shouted and sobbed pitifully. Within the hour, messengers had been sent everywhere by water and by land, inquiring if the children or any of them had been seen, but in vain. A total of 130 had been lost.
Some say that two children had lagged behind and returned to the town. One of them was blind and the other mute. The blind child was not able to point out the place, but could explain how the children had followed the pipe. The mute child was able to point out the place, although he or she had heard nothing. One little boy in shirt sleeves had gone along with the others, but had turned back to fetch his jacket and thus escape the tragedy. For when he returned, the others had already disappeared into a cave within the hill. This cave still exists. Up to the middle of the 18th century, and probably still today, the street through which the children were led out to the town gate was called the Bungeloza Street, meaning drumless or soundless, because no dancing or music was allowed there. And if a bridal procession crossed the street on its way to church, the musicians would have to cease playing. The mountain near Hamelin, where the children disappeared, is called Koppenberg. Two stone monuments in the form of crosses have been erected there, one on the left side and one on the right. Some say that the children were led into a cave and emerged on the other side in Transylvania. <laughs>